Hello, we're back, hey. and it's Open Couch Gaming with another Level Up Yours podcast. Whoop, whoop. It's, it's certainly been a while since those Devil May Cry 5 streams, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been exactly a month. Maybe yeah, a sorry month. folks, Jordan and I are students, you can't really control finals. Yeah, and the next two weeks are nothing but finals, so you better be damn proud we're giving you this much. Oh yeah. And fair to say, we certainly have a lot to talk about concerning recent news, one of which, yep. roll drums, Joker's in Smash now. He's in Smash, I got to play him a bit, and I like him so far. I oh. like him a lot. Because um, when the gameplay trailer for him uh, showed up shortly before he released, which was way sooner than I thought, I, I got to see his special attacks and all that the move where he's up in the air and shooting downwards while spinning i immediately thought of dante <laughs> like yeah i know that... some of his alternate costumes literally are a call out to uh dante and virgil with the red and blue coat <laughs> actually those are references to the other persona games huh. well they look far more like dmc than actual well, I certainly got a DMC vibe off of that uh, spinning gun move because that is a move you do as Dante with his gunslinger style. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten some time to play with him, and he is just great so far. His tether move, his up B, when he doesn't have Arsene out, it, it's so huge in terms of the range. It's insane. And the gun is hilarious because... You know, a lot of people complain that Snake doesn't have a gun anymore like he did in Brawl. And Joker's got one now, and technically Kirby does too. So, yeah, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of Joker, a recent announcement has made a lot of waves in both good and bad fashion. And that is the announcement of Persona 5 Royal, or Persona 5 R for short. Yeah, that's just literally like a uh, HD remake or something of... Well, Persona normal. 5 is already HD. This is just a re-release with more content. So it's like, it's Persona 5's version of Persona 4 Gold. Ah, uh, well, like, Persona 4 Gold I thought was an update. Like, when they put it on the beta, not only did it have more content, but they, like, updated the graphics. Yeah, updated graphics, uh, more story content, new characters, more, s just more yep, stuff, more <laughs> stuff added on to a game that already was worth its sixty dollar price. Actually, wait, yeah, I think it was like, fifty bucks. I, I think at least Persona Four Golden made more sense than the P Five re release. Yeah, at least the Golden was being released for a newer console with its updates and. It made sense because it was like a year or two after the OG release. Where this That's one's fair. like the exact next year. And it's like, were you just holding this content back? Uh, I wouldn't say that. The game again? It's been over two years, and it's going to be over it three been, years uh, due to yeah. the Western release being 2020. And in terms of what you're talking about, in terms of the console release, I do understand what you're talking about. I myself would have loved to see Royale become available on Switch. You know, me too. Like I, I everybody's think been no saying, reason it shouldn't. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason it shouldn't be on Switch. And the only reason I really don't like the Persona series compared to like the rest of the Shin Megami Tensei like properties is Shin Megami Tensei like as a whole has switched over to Nintendo for like the last decade. And Hell, Shin Megami Tensei some... Five is going to come to Switch. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like the main series ties itself to Nintendo, but it feels really awkward that the side series that is although, arguably like, more popular game, than the main series. Yeah, it is a PlayStation exclusive, unless it's like the side series spinoffs, in which case, like the Persona Four fighting game is on every. Yeah, um, as well as um, Persona 5, the Muso fighting game that also got announced the day after Royal Edition. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, I've always kind of found it weird that Persona, for some reason, is now a PlayStation exclusive, essentially. But like, Shin Megami Tensei, the freaking mother of 
Persona essentially is a Nintendo exclusive. I'm like, can't we just have some overlap? Yeah, let's have some overlap. It doesn't have to be all of the Persona, Persona games, but having five would at least add more, you know? Yeah, and I wouldn't mind, you know, give me uh, Persona 2, I think, was the one with Hitler in it. Like, maybe just <laughs> bring that over to the Switch. I would have enjoyed that. You realize they'd have to give them the version where he's just called Fuhrer, right? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, that's the joke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, to me, I think Persona's a big enough series that there'd be fans on both the Xbox switch and god knows the pc because the sega is now on the uh pcs and also on switch well it's not going to be on xbox though yeah which is weird i think it does need to be on xbox <laughs> it would get a larger audience and it would give those xbox fans and taste of rpgs yeah because they don't get enough yeah like, they don't final. hell like, dragon really quest don't. 11's re-release isn't getting a xbox version Mm -hmm. but it is getting a switch version and i'm going to be on you about that a lot yeah i, I will probably get that it's really good the game is really good and speaking of playstation 4 uh for anybody that follows my twitch I apologize for the lack of streams. It's both a combination of school stuff, but also because my PS4 is actually in repairs night, right now. But as of the time of this podcast, I'm going to be getting it back today. Sweet. Yeah, I'll finally get to be able to play some games that I've been holding off on for a while and even replay some that I haven't really gotten the chance to yet. So besides that... Uh, yeah, Persona 5 R, I'm excited for it, and same with the uh, Muso Persona game. I, I get that a lot of people are kind of frustrated about that, but it's cool looking. It looks cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, Musos are always fun. Look at Hyrule Warriors, for example, in terms of a success with something of that formula. Yeah, no, that... I, to me, I still am surprised Hyrule Warriors worked at all. Like, I really was expecting that to be a giant flop. Yeah, a lot I of people no were hoping problem. Fire Emblem Warriors would also work just as well as a success, but because Nintendo doesn't really care much about the older Fire Emblem games, people were yeah. just eye-rolling about how it's like more Awakening fan service and more Fates fan service. Not even for Echoes, because that's the most recent game as of now. Three Houses hasn't come out yet, and we're still getting uh, love for Krom and Lucina and all the old faces we've seen a billion times since 2013. Yeah. It's not that I hate Wait Awakening. I still think it's one of the better Fire Emblems <laughs> to try and at least get into to start the series off, but... It's like, come on, there are other games and other characters that people prefer over the Awakening characters. I mean, I give you that, but the thing is, that is the game that essentially saved the entire series. Yeah. And from its sales numbers, those are going to be the characters that are the most recognizable. Yeah, I know in the end, Nintendo's a business the and they got to capitalize on certain things that succeeded over others that didn't. Exactly, and even when I was voice auditioning for some roles to do like some band covers and stuff of Fire Emblem, I know my friends, especially the fangirls, were more interested in the fact I landed a role as, I believe, Ryoma than yeah. anyone else. Because he is one of the more recognizable characters. Him and his giant hair. Pretty much. I mean, he has the cloud stripe hand effect, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Speaking but, of cloud strife, um, did you know that Final Fantasy VII is now out for Switch? I have seen that. I'm probably not going to buy it again for the Switch, as I already have it on PC. But I am thinking I will be buying Final Fantasy IX for the Switch after I finish a bit of my backlog. Yeah, the only other... The only final fantasies that have played so far are actually the four remake on ds and the 
uh, what was it? 15. Just 15 Royal Edition. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't surprised by 15. I'm surprised it did as well as it has, but I It hasn't didn't aged it very well of... lately. Yeah. I mean, if you've seen but... Super Eyepatch Wolf's video about the game, then you'll pretty much understand why. I haven't, actually, but that's that's my thing. Like, looking at it, it never really appealed to me, but it is kind of interesting. I yeah. like the new Final Fantasy Online, though. It's pretty good. Yeah, and on top of that, Final Fantasy fourteen has done pretty well so far. It's pretty popular. Yeah. Pretty much. So long as it's not Final Fantasy twelve, I'm happy. <laughs> or, the, or if it's not a game based off that two-episode Final Fantasy anime... I, I, I don't even know episodes. what you're talking about, but okay. There was this Final Fantasy anime that I saw okay. as a kid years ago, and it featured these Are two you kids. Are about the movie Spirits Within? No, no, like okay. legitimate anime. Wow, okay. Yeah, it, it, like, it's super obscure. Not many people really know about it. It, it featured this guy that had, like, elementals as bullets and he had like a gun arm i believe okay it, it go look it up go look up the that um to really get some obscure final fantasy stuff in your head because man i haven't thought of that in years but speaking of anime there is one thing that got announced recently that put a giant dumb smile on my face Vinland Saga finally has a premiere date. Sweet. I'm so happy. July 7th or 8th. Between one of the two. So sadly, it's premiering just as I'm going to be coming back from RTX. Awesome. So, so yeah, we'll I'm, definitely have an episode on those two things together. Yeah, I'm so, so excited for that. And the new trailer for it. Jordan hasn't seen it yet, but I have. And it looks awesome. Like, I'm so happy that it's not 3D CG. I'm so happy that the characters all sound right. Like, even though I don't know, understand Japanese very well, I could clearly understand which lines were being said from the original source material. I'm just excited. I'm excited, and I can't stop shaking about it. <laughs> okay, so what was I supposed to look up again? <laughs> I just finished. Uh, for any of y'all who don't know, I do voice acting, and I was sending something into Reagan Gustin, if anyone knows her. Yeah, she's um, known as um, Ginja Ninja on YouTube. Yep, so I went ahead and had to send in some questions to her about an episode that was released the day of the Nazrea series. Hooray! Yep. Like, as of the recording of this podcast, today was the day that Ray released a new episode about our Nuzray comic dub, and Jordan was in it. Woo! So, yeah. Go watch that shit. Go watch go. it. She's go cool. now. Come back to this. Yes, go watch it. Pause this, go watch it, then come back to this, because we're very lonely. Yes. Yes, please help us. Yes, we're like that, we're like that one dog in the puppy store that never got picked up. We're oh like God. if we're like if Bolt's opening was sadder. Pretty much, pretty much. Okay, uh, yeah, but what was I supposed to look up? <laughs> the Final Fantasy anime. I swear it's uh, real. Okay, I, I'm I am looking this up right now. Yeah, do it because it is. It, it's like it, it's never referenced anywhere. Okay. Like the only other time I've heard about it was from like an old bit from a nostalgia critic video holy crap yeah okay well not only is final fantasy 15 a actual um anime but i think the one you're talking about is final fantasy unlimited it was yes in that was it thank and, you and um i love it this main character looks kind of emo and the fact is he has a triple barreled pistol that just screams Vincent Valentine. Yeah, like, he as looks soon like a, as I see it. He looks I, he's like, like a, a knockoff Vincent. Vincent. Well, I mean, he has his appeal. I I would definitely lick some cream off of them nipples, but uh <laughs> Yeah, no. Um 
yeah, this already looks pretty weird. And as you say, if it's like two episodes, I'm going to probably have to watch this later. I also want to know why this boy and girl are wearing gauntlets with infinity stones in them. And <laughs> I have were, questions. I have plenty of questions. They had the infinity gauntlet before it was a meme. I mean, yeah, before it was a meme, but after it was a thing. <laughs> but in the case of that anime, it might be more than two episodes. I just remember seeing two episodes, like, on repeat when I was a kid. I mean, I'm going to have to go see it now. That That's the main thing. Like, yeah. Okay. It's this is weird, now the thing, kind of anime that you can I'm... find whenever you dig deep enough. Oh, yeah, definitely. Although, one uh, other thing that's going to be going on is, as I said, I'm going to be going to RTX, and I'm super yeah. excited about that. Mm. Another nice trip to Austin in the sweltering heat of Texas. So, I you've mean, got any, so what's Texas, been happening so, yeah. on your end? Any news? I mean, as far as news goes on my end, let's see. One of the episodes I was in got posted. I got two papers due next week. Ooh. Studying for my final in contemporary archaeology. Um, <laughs> so a full home plate for the much. hospital. <laughs> yeah, no, like most of it is I'm doing chores and running around. And I'm hoping today at three o'clock there's a church in town doing a nerf war. That it's not just kids there, and I'm going to go and shoot some people with nerf guns. That's good. Life. That's always a good time. That That's like the main thing I'm looking forward to today. Amanda's off seeing Infinity War, and she got pissed I had other plans. But, you oh. know, we'll leave the couples in fighting for later. <laughs> well, you know where I'm going to have my money put down. <laughs> yep. The um, fact is, I'm going to get Infinity War spoilers, I bet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've also got some stuff coming up, one of which is me graduating, finally. After three years, I'm finally getting my liberal arts degree. There you go. And after that, I'm actually getting my first tattoo. Okay. And it's going to be of the uh, logo star from the No More Heroes series. I'm getting it on the back of my left shoulder. Oh, okay. And, so you're always going to have a little piece of Santa Destroy with you. Yes. I will always have a piece of Santa Destroy and Travis with me. Because Lord knows he's probably not going to be in Smash as much as I want him to be. I mean, I hear they're going to uh, have a second DLC character pack. So they did. maybe. The, yeah, oh wait, I do mean, you mean another uh, pack of characters? Yeah, like another five characters will be released after this five. Oh, are you? Oh, you're talking about Smash. I thought you were talking about Travis Strikes Again. My bad. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm glad like Travis Strikes Again has this DLC. I'm still waiting for the Bad Girl DLC. It's but, out. Uh, it's out. Yeah, it's out. But if you got the game like day one and you use the code, it's not releasing until the thirty. Oh. Okay. So if you want it for free. Um, you still gotta wait a little. Oh, that's like, fair. I got the Shinobu. Uh, the Shinobu's already. awesome. I love her. Yeah, no, I, I literally was playing it with Amanda for a little bit. I brought the Switch over, and I was like, I want to level up Shinobu anyway. So I love her design. Ahead, her design's awesome. Shinobu. I mean, her design's always been awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. If you yep. love Shinobu. Even from the first game, her design was awesome. Yeah. I'm still... Like, praying for him to be in smash brothers it would be good on top of uh on top of one other thing i actually have a little update about a character that i would enjoy in smash brothers and a lot of people usually point to shantae or shovel knight for an indie character but those two ain't happening sadly yeah i mean shovel knight's already a trophy yeah and shantae, shantae I'm, is a I'm spirit sorry. she's she's been on too much and Okay, I don't care about the spirit thing. The thing is, they've already disproven that if there's a spirit, they won't make a character of it. Uh, so if it's a spirit, it can still be a DLC character. It really doesn't matter. Seems That's they're fair. backing off on spirits because spirits were a fucking failure and everyone hates them. Yeah. Um, Besides, like, the whole any kind of meme value they drive out. 
Yeah, pretty much. That's because about the if, only if there's thing. something, if there's a few things that are certain in life, it's death, taxes, and anything can be made into a meme. Eventually, yes. I um, mean, you got to see the amount of Endgame Avengers memes about Ant Man and Thanos to understand that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, heck, I literally am just scrolling through our Twitter right now because I don't check it enough. And um, yeah, as soon as I started scrolling down, I got this picture of an open RP. Thanos works at Chipotle. Welcome <laughs> to Chipotle. How can I help you? It's just Thanos standing there with a Chipotle hat. I'm like, all right, all right, we're doing this. I can't wait to see all of the responses. Yep, that is a thing. Wait for people to call that the uh, Avengers Endgame spoilers. Mm hmm. I mean, if that actually is the after credit scene, I'm pissed. Oh, that would <laughs> Got be amazing. <laughs> no, I would be on the floor crying. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, yeah, he loses. Now he just works at Chipotle. That would it's be like amazing. He resigns himself to working at Chipotle. <laughs> and, then the, and then the very final bit of dialogue that appears is, Chipotle, we always give people a second chance. Mm-hmm. That would be so good. Oh my oh, god. god. So yeah, overall, news has been pretty good. Like with Vinland Saga, Persona 5, and uh, Smash Brothers, and Shinobu, and No More Heroes, and such. Uh, what games have you been able to play lately? Okay, so I've been playing the Travis uh, Strikes Again DLC recently. I went ahead and I've nearly finished Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Mm -hmm. The thing that's holding me back is that final part in a freaking nobody castle i still call uh, trying to i still call trying to the most useless game in the series i mean it is but it's kind of fun um i just really hate trying to get all of those ending cards because like beat this enemy in this amount of time or you have to get all of the timers on the hercules things to match up to certain things to get a card like i keep either getting the normal ending for waiting too long or I keep getting the best ending for just killing things the way I would normally kill things and then I try to get in the middle and I just don't do it for some reason and I'm all like damn it uh yeah. I want that I want that card I want I want all the secret ending stuff um I played that and other than that I actually haven't played any games except for like two new flash games on new grounds I just I don't have time to game yeah, same on my end. The only game I've really been playing with excessive amounts of time is Devil May Cry 5, but that's only because I've been able to just do a thing of cranking out an attempt on Bloody Palace or cranking out a couple missions on Sons of Sparta, and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. I did find out something really, really amazing, though, during a Let's Play. Um, I was watching Wooly vs. do Devil May Cry 5, and I found out that in the boss fight against Virgil, you can Royal Guard, in other words, parry all of his attacks, and I didn't know that. I didn't know boss attacks could be parried. Hmm. So I, I attempted that, and I got an S against Virgil, and I, and I was like, man, I wish I knew that, but too soon. I did it too soon to f uh, figure that out. Well, in current news today, I'm going to have to look it up and see if it's real, but uh, someone just sent me pictures and said someone just shot up the Alvin Starbucks. Oh. Hooray. That's the one <laughs> nice I usually downer. go to. <laughs> it's not even a downer. I'm kind of like, I wonder what they used, because the hole in that window is telling me it was probably a slug, but then there's a lot of smaller holes, and I'm like, a 38 handgun? Like, the heck were they even trying to use? Maybe they were trying to use the door knocker from Pumpkin Scissors. Oh god, who knows? Do you know uh, about I'm, I'm that gun? Looking this up. Do you no, know about I that gun not. from that anime? Amazing. I mean, I don't. I don't even know what it is, like the anime, but it sounds fun. The so, door knocker is cool. a okay. So for anybody that doesn't know, uh, Pumpkin Scissors is based off of a manga, and I think it's from like the early aughts. It looks like it's from the early aughts, and the door knocker is a weapon that one of the main characters uses, and this main character is like really really tall like really tall and really built and mm -hmm. he carries this handgun that loads only a single round but the round is a 13 millimeter round oh okay like there he's he was a former infantryman that was 
pretty much trained to take down tanks on their own. Mm -hmm. And it, it's called the door knocker because whenever they press the barrel up against the metal of the tank, it sounds like he's knocking on the door. Huh. It's All one right. of the most underrated anime weapons ever, and I highly recommend checking it out. I probably will. So, yeah. In general, um, besides that, things have been going pretty well. Devil May Cry 5 is still awesome, but, you know, you already knew that if you saw the streams. Yeah, well, I was there. Yeah. And... Actually, when you mentioned uh, Kingdom Hearts, I just remembered this uh, bit of news that passed up recently. Critical Mode has been added into Kingdom Hearts 3. What? Yeah, a new difficulty. Oh, neat. Because yeah, I heard there was an update for it, but... Yep, that was the like, update. A lot of people on? complained about how Kingdom Hearts 3 was really easy, so Critical Mode should have done them well. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, honestly, after playing 3 myself, I can completely understand what they're saying in terms of it being too easy. It was it was so easy to breeze through that game. Really? Yes. Well, that sucks. Sora's, Sora's abilities in combat and everything that the game gives him to fight, it completely just wipes the floor with enemies like like insanely quickly. And they try to remedy that by having you fight hordes of enemies per encounter, but that just only makes them more tedious than fun. Hmm. So, yeah. And that's just the furthest... That's one of my complaints about the combat of Kingdom Hearts 3, but one of my other ones is I don't like the attraction attacks. I really don't. Yeah. It's because it's so easy to activate them every encounter and it makes them lose their luster because one, they are most of them are actually really tough to control and the other is like depending on which one you get, they either suck or are perfect for the situation. Like well, if they, I like, never saw the point in including them anyway, but if you ask me, I think the focus was just too much on Disney. And that's one reason the game kind of turned me off from the start. It exactly. Just... That's, that's the complaint I Final Fantasy too. has always been at least half, or maybe like 40% in most cases of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Like... You know, it, it, it's always there. Where okay. this time, it very literally just looked like Square dropped the ball and said, here, Disney, have some fun. Yeah. Like, I'll say this. The attraction things, if if the attraction attacks were only limited to certain encounters, I would not have complained about them as much. Like, uh, you know that yeah, roller maybe coaster making attack? it like a boss exclusive. Or yes, something, like when you're yes. up against the Titan, like the the Rock Titan and one of the very last fights of the game, having that um, that roller coaster attack. Sorry if you hear that in the background. That's me snapping. But uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, if you have um, that. But with all of the attraction attacks being just boss exclusive attacks, I would that would completely eliminate that complaint of mine because I wouldn't be encountering the frustration of having to control those every single encounter. Like I actively avoided enemies that allowed for those attacks to happen because you the way you activate them is that you hit a specific enemy with a green outline around it and then you press triangle. But as I said, I often avoided those. Yeah. So, on top of that, the way that Disney just overtook Kingdom Hearts is kind of sad to me because it's not even a matter of the Disney World's not being fun. It's a matter of the Disney World's just feeling like they're just advertisements for a movie that everybody's already seen. The worst case is in what everybody considers their least favorite world in the game by sheer irony that is Frozen. Mm-hmm. Frozen, I would also say, is my least favorite world in the game because it is literally just a abridged version of the movie where Sora, Donald, and Goofy are just showing up in the background and are like, hey, we're here too! Yeah. Like, I kid you not, you are left out of the climax of the world. Like, when Hans 
spoilers for Frozen, I guess, when Hans tries to swing his sword down at Anna or Elsa or whatever, like, yeah. Sora and the the whole party are literally dropped into a portal to fight a cool-looking wolf boss. And I'm just like, really? Like, it, it, granted, the boss was cool, but literally yeah. the last cutscene of the game is like the one of the final scenes in the movie, and Sora and, Sora and Donald and Goofy are just standing in the background like, we didn't do much with these characters here. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I noticed. It was more focused on Disney and its properties than being a Kingdom Hearts game from all of the trailers. Yeah, like, like a lot of people can throw praise about how the animation in the Disney replicated cutscenes look so good, but that's the problem. They didn't really divulge much from the movies at all. And don't get me wrong, I think it's always been... They want you to feel like you're in that movie. It shouldn't divulge a lot from the movie. Like when you go to Halloween Town, but you it would help try for them to, to at least like gain, give Halloween the game a Town. sense of identity outside of the Disney World. Kingdom Hearts Two well, yeah. did that. Kingdom Hearts One did that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that for the most part, Sora's base design can fit in any classic Disney scenario with little change. That was the point. All the zippers and stuff, well, yeah, that's Final Fantasy creeping in. But that's the thing. It should always kind of be creeping in. It shouldn't just be right in front of you. When you went to, like, Halloween Town, you know what? You started putting on tiny little masks. Uh, Donald became a mummy, uh, you know. Goofy became a Frankenstein monster. Frankenstein. Yeah. When I look at the, you know, like, Monsters Incorporated world, I'm like, okay, that kind of works because... They are all turning into monsters that look like they can belong in that movie. Now, I don't know if I really like the direction of Sora being a little cat monster, but, you know, hey, it works. It still looks like Sora, but it looks like something that could have been in the movie. Yeah, and um, helping matters is that with the Monsters, Inc. world, they actually decided to have a story that takes place after the events of the first movie and tell its own separate story with Sora interacting more with the characters outside of, hey, we'll occasionally pop our heads into the plot of the original one and be like, hey guys, we're still here, you're still playing this, bye. Yeah, and that's my thing. Like, the Toy Story world, okay, Sora turns into an action figure. That's cool. It fits with the theme. And it's also going to be a kick-ass Figma. It really will. It really will. Um, but that's my thing, is that you have to always look like you belong in the setting. For me, that can't not... be avoided. That's true. But that's why, like, look at the Pirates of the Caribbean world, though, in Kingdom Hearts 2, and then compare it to the Pirates of the Caribbean world in Kingdom Hearts 3, and notice that the Kingdom Hearts 2 treatment of it was make it take place at night, darken the textures, and try to go for realism on PS2 hardware because we're trying to match the fact that it's a live-action movie. Compare that to the uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 world, though, and you're getting a more cartoony take of Pirates of the Caribbean, trying to make it match the Kingdom Hearts look. Well, I'm not mattered about... What matters not to me is the look. What matters to me is that this is supposed to be a Square Disney crossover. That's been what True. Kingdom Hearts has been, and the first and second and majority of the sign games got that idea, but yeah, but three well, is I just like is... satirized with Disney stuff. Yeah, at least at the ending though, we get a world ends with you Shibuya. Well, we cameo. Like, that's true, that... but that really doesn't justify the whole like throw Sora off to the sides and essentially tell the movies again format. Like, I bet a lot of people were looking forward to the idea of a frozen world where Sora gets to, like, fight with Elsa or fight some kind of cool organization member. You rarely yeah. fought anything in Kingdom Hearts 3 that wasn't, I, that wasn't a Heartless. Like, there were no Disney yeah. bosses, no Organization 13 bosses that were sprinkled throughout there. Nothing. The only one that really counted with that was fighting against Davy Jones in the Pirates world. Yeah. Hey, at least it wasn't SpongeBob Davy Jones for the hell of it. 
<laughs> that that would have improved in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have. Um, oh wait, no, that's the Flying Dutchman, not not Davy oh, Jones. Oh yeah, you're right. Davy man. Jones was the locker filled with socks. You're right. Well, still, just fight a locker full of socks. That would have been interesting. <laughs> New form of magic is stink. <laughs> stink no, magic. no, 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 no. I got a better one. It's a uh, damage upgrade to a Roga. <laughs> you create a stench <laughs> shield around yourself. <laughs> so every time you cast it now, like a green wind envelops you. <laughs> yeah, it's, and you've also got like different scents for it. It's like dirty socks, oh my God. arrow, <laughs> wet dog. Uh, oh God, what's another one? Uh, brown streaks. <laughs> Skunk spray. <laughs> Decaying fish. Rotten Your grandmother's potatoes. corpse. <laughs> but yeah, in general, it's just three wasn't bad. It's just three could have done so much more than have a buttload of cutscenes and just it could have done better. It could have done much, much better. Like when when Hundred Acre Woods was announced, I was kind of excited because mm -hmm. I liked the Hundred Acre Woods and Kingdom Hearts two. Oh yeah. But when it shows up in three. Like, I look, I I was actually on stream doing that, and I sat back in my chair and I was like, was there a reason to add this? At, like, any? Because the, the premise of having Hunter Acre Woods in there is that Sora disappears off of the cover of the, Pooh's book, and yeah. when he goes back in, Pooh is just like, oh no, I just wanted to see you again. And it's like, really? You have me play, like, two mini-games and it's done. Like, mm -hmm. no items. Like, there was one Keyblade, but it's like, oh, a Keyblade in compensation for a world that could have honestly been cut out of the game and literally nothing would be missed. Sadly. Literally nothing. I mean, you're right. Not to mention the whole... I, I do I do love the uh, the idea of having Remy in for, like giving boosts to the party via like those meals you can make with him that's a neat idea but i kind of yeah, agree here with they're the whole trying thing. to make the food thing more important but yeah as well as you know having donald announce the finding of ingredients every other step mm. but yeah i guess that's my whole kingdom hearts 3 rant it's just it feels shallow. It feels shallow, and I hate to have to say that because I've waited for that game for so long. Yeah. It honestly just feels incomplete and rushed compared to what came before. Yeah. Because Lord That's... knows everybody will still regard 2 as the best. I still regard 2 as the best. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that's I guess that's the Kingdom Hearts part of the discussion. Yeah, that, that went on a little deeper and more ranty than i expected but yeah I mean, i'm sorry for that true. folks i get yeah. really heated when it comes to that subject but speaking of heated um when the persona announcements came around a lot of people got heated about one particular thing that being the new character of kasumi i think is her name she's mm -hmm. uh, a new f character that's a first year at the main character's high school and she's like a new phantom thief character she's like the marie of of this game Neat. and she got a phantom thief costume and it's been shown off and people certain people are not happy about it mm. and it's because it's kind of like a leotard look because she's like a gymnast or a dancer but the whole conversation about it is that people don't like how her outfit shows too much leg and i'm just sitting in my chair looking at this like man these people really want to find something to complain about mm. like it, like you got to really see those on social media to get what i'm talking about but it is just stupid the yeah. whole the whole thing got comedically summed up in one particular photoshop uh video do you do you remember that SpongeBob episode where it was the introduction of Doodle Bob? Yes, everyone remembers Doodle Bob. Hoi, me hoi, me boy. Yeah. 
So the the joke was that SpongeBob had the text over him that said Persona fans, and he was erasing Kasumi's bare legs. And then when he got finished, Patrick was behind him and it said Atlas on his stomach, and it said, "Take it easy, it's just a drawing." And I'm like, mm. that is literally exactly what everybody that with a rational mind will think. Pretty much. Like, I'm not saying that these people are invalid for being a bit uncomfortable with it, but they gotta realize it's a fictitious character. They're not harming yeah. a real girl by pre- depicting her with a leotard slash dancer's outfit that a legitimate person would have to wear in that field. Yep. Like, it's just calm your tits about it, man. Pretty much. It's pretty much like the argument whenever... Uh, somebody tries to bring up the I, I, the sexual content stuff with Japan and the UN. Japan will just tell the UN they're not real women. Stop treating them like like real women. Yeah, like we can depict whatever we like in Cartoon Land because it's a freaking cartoon. It's a Are freaking you cartoon. Autistic? Yeah. yeah, like literally, I'm just waiting for someone to walk up to the UN. Do that deep inhale hand clap and be like, are you autistic? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, and I get that some people may not want that kind of exposure to certain, you know, others for the sake of their innocence. But it's like, why would you show that in the first place if you think it could possibly damage somebody? Yeah, it, it's not damaging anybody. It's literally just having fun with art. And, yeah, having, know, fun art, living, having fun with art, having fun with character design. Yeah, living vicariously through something you create, you know? Like, yeah. Point is, people can be stupid when it comes to this kind of yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, and the thing is, if people hear the fact I just said autistic like three times, that mm. that's the thing. They're going to be stupid about it because, yeah, guess what? You know what? When we're eight, we throw that around on the playground like it's no big deal. Because or if you play Overwatch really competitively. Or if you play Overwatch competitively, you throw it around like it's no big deal. But the fact is, people will be butthurt about yep. that. And in fact, people I'm will sorry, probably take have... out your sound clip and use it against you just after you post this. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I don't like that that's going to happen, but I accept the fact that's going to happen because that's just the world we live in now. Because yeah. people are stupid, as you just said. Yep. Or sometimes people can just be shitheads. Like, um, exactly. Did I ever tell you about the piracy argument I got into with somebody? Oh boy. Oh so, boy, what is it? Okay, so I'll keep this brief because we're almost approaching the 50 minute mark. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, there's this new show from Rooster Teeth called Genlock, and it's based primarily in the themes of a lot of older mecha shows because the creator of the show, Grey Haddock, always wanted to make his own mecha show. And,. It got a star-studded cast. Miese Williams from Game of Thrones, David Tennant, Michael B. Jordan, Dakota Fanning, and like all these big-name actors. Even Koichi Yamadera, the Japanese voice actor for Spike Spiegel. Mm. And from what, when I saw the first season, I didn't think it was too bad. Granted, it could have been better, but it is certainly better than a lot of Rooster Teeth's other efforts as of recent. But, yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about Rooster Teeth in general these days. Like, eh, it could have been better, but, you know, it's not horrible. Yeah, at least they're not EA. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, but God. But what pissed yeah. me off was that on my Ruby Facebook group that I'm a part of, one particular guy who has a YouTube channel, but I'm not even going to mention him on here, he advocated piracy of Genlock to somebody that was slightly interested in the show. And I just, I I snapped. I just told him, like, okay, stop. I'm going to stop you right there. What is it about Rooster Teeth that pisses you off so much to the point where you would advocate piracy of them? Did they kick your dog when you were a kid? Or or did Ruby's degrading fight scenes really get on your balls that badly? Well, here's my thing. You don't have to pay for Genlock. Actually. From what I know. You do. Do you? Yeah, you do. Well, okay, I'm going to tell you this. As someone who's not a big fan of Rooster Teeth, then, I probably wouldn't pay for it. And I watch enough things on alternative anime sites because I don't like Crunchyroll as a company anyway. Um, 
piracy to me, at least you're getting fans for your show. And if you don't know if you're going to like it, then oh. I actually support piracy in the case. Oh. Go ahead, try it out first, mm. and then support the creator if you enjoy what they've done. If not, then don't buy the merch. You've watched a few free episodes and move on with your life. You know, like no one got hurt because of that. Well, that's the deal is that a lot of people tend to be not very supportive of the companies that, you know, put out these things like Crunchyroll. I use Verve, which in turn yeah. was made by Crunchyroll, but yeah. I'm getting my money's worth, $10 a month for Rooster Teeth, uh, High Dive, Crunchyroll, Geek and Sundry, and all these things. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. worth the money because, one, I'm getting a bunch of content that I know is supporting the original creators of these things. Yeah. And... I just get so, I get a giant headache anytime I ever hear somebody that tries to claim like, oh, it's not that much better than piracy because they still don't directly support the creators. And it's like, really? You, so you think stealing out of their pockets is making it any better? And it's not, no, it's not and, but, like no creator, thing, like... no creator, not even EA as a company deserves uh, piracy as retaliation for their business efforts. That's no. just that's just ridiculous because no, all piracy is going to true. do is show them that they do have an audience. It's just that their audience is too immature and cheap to ever pay for it. Well, and that's where like I say, yeah, there's a time and place for piracy. For me, it's like if I literally cannot afford to pay for a box set of something that's a hundred bucks, but I do want to keep up with it and I'm going to probably buy like some merch, I'm going to probably pirate the show because, well, I'm not going to pay for the box set because I want to watch the reruns that I've missed and I probably don't have a free way to watch it any other way. That's fair. But that can be fair. Sure. Like when either yeah, like, the, when either your choice of platform doesn't simulcast it like Netflix or if you mm -hmm. actually cannot find any affordable, legal way of checking a show out. Those are the only cases where it can be a choice, but not a valid choice, I'd say. Well, and that's my thing. I, I leave it as a gray area. Personally, I support piracy in some cases, but like what you're saying with EA... Yeah, no, that doesn't make sense because they're going to get illegitimate numbers on their server and show that, yeah, there are more downloads for this game than sales at one point because everything's connected through Origin now. And even if you break a game, I mean, it's so much work just to essentially pirate those games now. It, it's not worth it. Yeah. Like, it, it really isn't. Um, I think there's still a reason to pirate some games, but literally the reason you would pirate now in my opinion a lot of the time is because native support for that game maybe didn't carry over to a modern uh operating system so i think pirating some older games or like i'll admit when i modded my wii i literally jailbroke it and everything else just for piracy because when the wii shop channel went down there is no legal way to get WiiWare games anymore so here's the thing that entire library of games nintendo worked on and approved of never carried over to the wii u it hasn't carried over to the switch there is no plans to make those games available if anyone wants to play them now the only way to do it is either through emulation or hacking original hardware for piracy in order to take the ROM files, put them on the console, and make it recognize them as if you bought them. Yeah. So if you want to save gaming history, because let's face it, even the Mario game you can buy from Nintendo, if you look at it, was a ROM file. The fact is, they didn't have the original ROMs, and we know they took one from the pirate community and literally put it on the Wii years ago, and that's the one they've been using since. Yeah. Most just... companies don't store their games for histories like per preservation you know so piracy in many ways is how we're going to protect our history as a community yeah it's just the, the shame the kind of mindset that piracy ends up developing yeah but i say it's a necessary evil it's a necessary evil but it just doesn't make it any less headache inducing with the end of the story of me 
basically trying to tear this asshole down was that I essentially told him, like, you can justify it as trying to, you know, spread it word of mouth and everything, review it for the sake of a YouTube channel or whatever, but if... But word of mouth is all well and good, but it doesn't help pay for an animator's groceries. That in the end, these are still companies with employees that they have to pay so that they can put food in their stomachs. Yep. And that's what infuriates me, is that these people just think that they're so above everything because they're not supporting the giant companies that are taking away the soul of their product. And it's like, oh yeah, you want to know what that soul is doing? It's starving the animators that's making your entertainment. And you're still cl trying to claim it to be free. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Like, that that's my thing. If you really like something, like, here's the thing. I've never once paid for any of the Gundam movies or the box sets. But I do buy the model. I buy into the merchandise. Because... I enjoy the series and the concept. The thing is, like, Iron-Blooded Orphans was in 2015. It's now being played on Adult Swim. But I didn't get to watch the first season of Iron-Blooded Orphans because even though my parents have Xfinity, I would have to pay for the entire first season at, like, 20 bucks. But the second season, they only had half of the second season available to watch for free. So guess what? I went ahead and just pirated it, and then I bought a Barbados because I was like, it was a really good show. Yeah. <laughs> so they are getting my money in the end. I do plan to support them, but I'm not going to go ahead and just buy the entire show to try it out when I don't know if I'm going to like it because it's yeah, not hooked up to the like main series. It's its own thing. That's kind of that, that's fair enough. Like if yeah. if there's just circumstances around it, then I can see your reasoning. But I think that yeah. if you have the necessary means of watching a show legally, you should. Yeah, you like should, Vinland Saga, for cases. instance. Vinland Saga is going to be on Amazon Prime, and you have Amazon Prime. I have Amazon Sorry. Prime, so yeah, we're just we going to watch it on Amazon. Prime. We can watch it on Amazon Prime. Sadly, yeah. though, I, I'm I'm willing to be patient for certain shows to be released legally. Like, um, there's this show called Carol and Tuesday that apparently is going to get released via Netflix because it's on Netflix Japan right now, and it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. It's directed by the guy that directed Cowboy Bebop. Mm -hmm. Heck, and... you know, I'm just kind of sad. I know there's more episodes animated of Baki in Japanese right now than there are on uh, Netflix in English. Because I was literally pirating the Japanese show before it came here to America as its uh, dub. Because I really love Baki and I just couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> I did not know that you liked Baki. Dude, I love Baki. And so, like, when it came here to America and it got on Netflix, I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and let it play in the background. That way, you know, it gets an American view. Uh, thumbs it up, because I already pirated and watched the series. And uh, then I realized, holy crap, they made season one shorter in English than it is in Japanese. And I was like, well, that really sucks. Because well, everyone's trying... Some casting problem. Yeah, I'm just like everyone's trying the simulcasting stuff right now, and uh, y'all just y'all uh, y'all y'all are failing. <laughs> I I wanted a few more episodes, like getting past the whole uh, where you know Tiger Guy beats up the dude on the roller coaster and the prison like, the prison guys yeah. with one of the people that throws yeah. up a grenade. Yeah, because we're already to the point in the Japanese one where. Uh, the black guy from America is in Japan and already meets Baki's father. And I'm like, we're at least, you know, five or seven episodes behind by the time it came here to America in English. And I'm like, by the time their second, uh, you know, season's done, they'll probably be in the middle of season three and then we'll just be getting season two. And I'm like... I, I don't want to wait that long, so yeah, I, I'm just thumbing it up as it comes here to America, and it's in See, English. See, in, in your case, in your case, the show has already fair. existed, and it and it just took a long time for it to get localized. Mm -hmm. Whereas with yeah, Carol and Tuesday, it is existing slowly, but I'm confident mm -hmm. that when it gets released over to the West, it'll be all available from the get-go. 
Yeah, that's my thing. Like, if it's all available, then okay, I may wait. But when it's something like what's going on with Baki, it's like hell. I'm I'm just going to keep pirating it because I'm enjoying the show that much, and it's not over here for me to enjoy. <laughs> right, that's fair. I mean, th yeah. that's probably what a lot of people feel towards the uh, Hajime no Ippo anime with its mm -hmm. first couple yep. seasons. Yeah. No, I, I would also say that for Hajime no Ippo. Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. Love Hajime in no general, Ippo, piracy good. is never a fun subject to talk about. It, it's it, it's just... not a fun subject, but that's why literally, like, case closed, I don't want to have an argument with people about it. Like, I get people are passionate on either side of it, but as far as I'm concerned, piracy is just kind of a necessary evil of the fan world we live in today. People yeah. want to consume media in different ways. I can, and I can recognize it being a necessary evil, but I don't think it's something that needs to be justified or something that needs to be, like, proud of, you know? Yeah. Like, if somebody's having to pirate for something, they shouldn't have to feel like they've trumped the system. Like... You, you, no, no, you, you didn't trump a system because these companies are still going to exist and see that numbers for their show have risen. Yep. But whatever, I guess they do them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much fighting a endless war on this, and so are other people that are against piracy. Yeah. Well, we have hit the hour mark. Yeah, we so. have. <laughs> so, yeah, any closing uh, any closing subjects, Jordan? Not really. This has kind of been a bit rambly of an episode, but I feel like we had fun, and that's all that really matters. Yeah. Um, got to talk about the new Persona 5 stuff. Got to talk about yeah. um, Smash Bros. a little bit. Uh, Vinland Saga, once more, I will send you the trailer, and go check out the trailer, and if you have Amazon Prime... Or if you're thinking about getting Amazon Prime, first off, get Amazon Prime because it actually it's is worth legitimate. it. Because here's my thing: if you're already shopping on Amazon, let me say you're going to literally get that hundred bucks you spend on Prime back just in covering your two day shipping cost. Like, yes, you get two day shipping for free now, which means you're getting your stuff faster. Plus, you literally get a percentage off on certain things. And if you use Amazon Prime Smile, it's not a lot. But guess what? Every time you make a purchase on Amazon you were going to make anyway, a portion of it goes to charity, all because you're a Prime member. And you get to choose what charity your purchases go to. We're not sponsored by Amazon, by the way. We aren't, but I'm just saying like 80% of people on this earth now are probably shopping on Amazon anyway. And when you get down to what you can get for using Prime, you honestly make money off of it. <laughs> yeah, and if you get Prime, you can watch Wotakoi like Jordan and I did. You can God, watch... Wotakoi is amazing. It's so good. You can watch. <laughs> it is so you can good. watch. Uh, you can watch Dororo, which is one I highly, highly recommend. It's based off a manga made by Osamu Tezuka, the creator of Astro Boy. Hmm. Um, and then there's Vinland Saga coming out in July, which I have not been able to stop raving about. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's pretty much all we really have. Um, besides that, uh, if you have a PS4, get Persona 4R if you haven't gotten Persona 5 already. Yep. Uh, oh, because... you know, we should have made some time to talk about the PS5 specs that leaked and what we think, but the specs? we'll do that later. The specs? Oh, yeah, the specs have leaked. You mean like the, the stuff about the updates and everything? Like the, the story updates? No, no, the PlayStation 5. Oh, the PlayStation 5. I was like, when you said P5, yeah, I was they're like, saying like it's... Or... I, can... I, I said my S really fast, but like we'll save that for the next episode. Yeah, we can save more that for the here. next one. How did I forget that? Oh, uh, I don't know, but it just hit me. Yeah, it just hit me too. God, I hate that. I hate my bad memory. Oh, mm -hmm. it's been overtaken by too many pictures of Lady from DMC. Yep. Ugh. All right. Well, I guess oh, well. we'll save that for another time. Um, yep. But with that, I believe we can close out this level up yours. Uh, sorry for the rambly tone. We're still sort of frazzled about our upcoming uh, end of the semester. And yep. when we come back for another level up yours, 
we can discuss some more other things on a bit of a lighter note, and we'll try not to ramble and rant too much. Sounds good. So, yeah, be sure to check that out, and also be sure to check out the Nuzray episode that Jordan was a part of, and give uh, give Ray a support. You know, she seems really cool. Mm -hmm. I would know. I haven't gotten to meet her yet. Yeah, she's cool. Talk to you all later. Bye! Bye!